Uh, let's strike. try strike. We sure. tried blast, that didn't happen. We tried heroes and villains, that didn't happen. Galactic assault, that's a joke. So let's try strike. Anyway, getting back around to our previous topic of conversation, which is what stereotypes you hold with or not hold with. Yes. Anyways, we we said that I eat too much pasta and drink too much wine. What else do we got? Yes. Uh, I'm trying to think of like what's a really Italian stereotype. Are you part of a mob? Uh, I'm not at liberty to say. Ah, that means yes. <laughs> I actually I am not, but my uncle was in the cement industry. If you know what my what I mean. Ah, I see what you did there. Actually, it is funny because uh, one of the cities here in Ohio, Canton, is actually the place where gangsters from Chicago would go whenever yep. they needed to like lie low for the Pretty heat to drop much. off. They would come here, and so for a while in the twenties, thirties, and forties. Uh, Ken had the nickname of Little Chicago because this is where gangsters would come. I can out. I can also, also say there that... was a burlesque theater downtown. Oh my! No longer open. Oh my! So steamy. Do tell. No, but <laughs> um, are you here? Mm -hmm. Are you in this game with me? You, On you... Kashik. Kashik. Oh my god. Don't start. <laughs> I am gonna be that guy. I am going to be that guy. I know, because I'm that guy to you all the time. Yes. But So I it's my turn. It's not your fault, it's just your turn. <laughs> yes. Alright. I'm defending this little bippy doo. Oh sorry. This bippy doo? <laughs> you you shot at me, sir. I did oh, not. Dude. I got scared. I saw green and I didn't know what green meant. Green means friend, not Gr food. <laughs> green is friend, not food. Um, oh, no. no, but what was I saying? Oh yeah, so there was a famous mobster in our general area um, known as Whiskey Dick. Um, and supposedly my grandfather, Ow. not the, not from you know the Italian side of the family, uh, used to deliver papers to him. So, <laughs> I do have some mob connections. Shiz, you are getting very dark in chat. <laughs> ah, dang! Janky, defend my post. What did what what did she just say? There's a bad. There's a bad driver opium addict stereotype with the Chinese thing. Yeah, that's not fun. Although that does remind me. No, it's fine. You're fine. Um, that reminds me of something though. What does it remind me of? Oh yeah, uh, there was this thing. I don't remember how it came up, but I remember one time we were having a conversation about like poppies or opium or something. Mm-hmm. And how, for some reason, it made like a comeback in the United States. And I'm like, yeah, because there definitely weren't wars fought about it in the turn of the last century. Dang it! I'm dead. Avenge me. Yeah, let's be honest. There are a lot of stereotypes all across the world about people drinking. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite ones from one of my other heritages is... I'm part Hungarian, so you could either call me a gypsy, uh, and if you do, that means that all of our recipes start with steal a chicken. <laughs> that is terrible. But hilarious. But hilarious. That's also true. Where are y'all's at? There you are. There you are. Come at me. Come at me. We will we're, we're going to lose. What? Do we all don't does it? Oh shh. No, they they have one life left. They have one life left to live. Yes. We're going to lose beta. But apparently now they have overtime. 
over time. Quickly, stop them. Where? When? I'm here. How? Who? Uh -oh. We lost. We lost? Everyone. Nope, we, we lost the whole round. I have no idea how this game works. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what my stereotypes are. Well, you're Irish. I am Irish. I come from several different strands of Irish potato farmers. Are your Lucky Charms magically delicious? <laughs> Thank you. Um... Oh no! So let's see. Irish potato farmers. And... Uh... English people who moved here in like the 1600s. Ah. And also some Pennsylvania Dutch, I think. We came here after World War II. Actually, fun story. The Italian side, my uncles ended up fighting against family in World War II. But not like actually, but like in theory. I don't know. I'm going to have to ask my, my Nana that story again, how, how that all went down. Because they either... I mean, they either did or they didn't. Awkward. But, uh... Oh, crap. Ooh. I mean... Yeah. You're not wrong, Chiz. Uh, I remember doing research about alcohol and its cultures during the summer. And its cultures, like... Oh, you mean like cultures that... Okay. <laughs> See, scientist brain. I was thinking, like, yeast cultures. Yeast! For, for like, fermenting alcohol. No. Cult, like, like, people. Human yeah. culture. Sorry. You uncultured swine. Chemistry scientist brain was thinking. Science D cultures. Oh, yeah, ah, this is 40. totally fried. Log rollers, that's fun. And we lost. Now, when you uh, say log roller, do you mean like. Well. Log rollers like on a lake log roller? Or like log rollers like their job was to roll logs through a forest? That's probably to a mill. Both of those are kind of correct if I'm if I remember correctly. Like the the, the ability on to logs. yeah on rivers. Yeah. The sport of log rolling came from the profession of log rolling. How is that a profession? Well, they had to get the logs from one end to the other somehow magically. Yeah. But you could just take a barge. <laughs> I'm just saying, Shh. log rolling sounds like it was invented by some drunk people. Oh, very obviously. Again, no offense to the Irish, <laughs> but... What planet are we on? Mormon pioneers. Ah, oh, the Mormons. Joseph Smith was called a prophet. Dum 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 dum. Yavin four. Mm. You can't argue my pronunciations. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. They are not correct though. So can many times in correct? Star Wars they have pronounced it as Yavin, Kashyyyk. These things have pronunciations that are pronounced in the franchise, and you are wrong. You are very. Clearly wrong. I'm just saying, based on the fact that I don't remember little tidbits about Star Wars, um, you are wrong. Wrong. You you can see like where I get that pronunciation based solely off of how it's spelled. You could see where I could say, oh, that's Yavin. <sighs> oh God. No, you're wrong. I mean, I I don't doubt that your pronunciations of these words are correct. I'm saying that... You're trying to justify that you're correct and you are wrong. I'm not saying my pronunciations are correct. I'm just saying you have to acknowledge 
message that where I'm coming up with my pronunciations is not, is not logical. It is logical, though. It ain't. Dang it. How do I get out of here? Ah! Um, oh, shoot. That's a teamy. Well, antimatter doesn't have an A sound to it. Yep. I don't even know how we lost. We just lost. How do you pronounce pecan? I don't say pecan. I say Is pecan. It... Mm. Really? You say pecan? <laughs> that sounds appetizing to you? Well, I don't eat pecans or pecans. Yeah, my grandpa my grandpa does. He eats pecan pie every year at Thanksgiving. Pecan pie. I say pecan. I say pecan. I also say caramel or car. No, wait. What do I say? Caramel. I say caramel. Everyone else does the caramel because it's quote unquote right. Ah. Yeah, I'll say I'll say caramel, but uh, I'll say caramel ah. when I want to say be like fancy. And I'm like, ooh, this deserves to be a little fancier. Yeah. Caramel. Like especially if I'm playing a like a fancy character, it's it's caramel or pecan. But naturally, I will say pecan and ca caramel. So for a fancy person, you would say caramel still? No, caramel. There you go. Okay. The first time you definitely were like, caramel. <laughs> no, I, okay. I got caught up in my... I, see? Uh, you say potato. I say potato. Let's call potato, the whole potato, thing potato, off. Tomato, tomato. Let's call the whole thing off. Now, I will say there are a couple things in that song that seem real weird. Like, uh... Is it pajama, pajama or pajama? I pajamas. Well, I call them PJs, so I guess the point's kind of mute for me. I just call them jammies. Um... There, there were, like, a couple... Like, Die! oysters and mm. oysters. Like, I have never once heard someone call oysters oysters. Yeah, it's oysters. Whoever says oysters is an idiot. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that somewhere... It's also, like, a regional thing. Like, you know, people with different accents pronounce things different ways. Mm, not oysters. No one would ever pronounce it oysters. I'm sure somewhere someone pronounced it oysters, or it probably wouldn't be in that song. Also, there my are people who say uh, potato, yeah, which is weird. They're wrong, but they do. Also, my phone died, so I no longer have access to the chat. So, if anyone wants to call me out as an idiot for my pronunciations of things, you have to go through Janky. Oh, that's why it says I lost a viewer. Yeah, that is why it says you lost a viewer, because I'm not viewing it Shame. anymore. I it, 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 mm. No, not shame on you. Oh. Shame that Twitch is silly. I have not seen The Last Jedi. Hopefully I will see it soon-ish. Um, probably... I mean, for the record, I have not seen him or her either. Or really? them. Ah, you oh, mother! I Noah went to the midnight showing. Go, ah, die! Yeah, that's right. I eliminated. Yeah, you know, it's... Oh, no, it's fine, Ryder. It's it's cool. It's, it's whatevs. Um, I mean, should I tell him the big re revealing spoiler at the end of the film? No, dude. I mean, I know you're kidding, but still, no. <laughs> You gotta keep all I mean, those ridiculous things to themselves. Although, that does remind me of a hilarious thing I did once, which was um, some friends of mine were getting into Lost. It was like, it was like when it was on. They were getting um, lost, oh no. It, it was when it was on Netflix and like, it had already ended, right? And I was never super into Lost, but I followed it enough to know like the story and also how it ended. And, uh, so what I ended up doing was they got into Lost, and I just started telling them things, but half of it was lies and half of it was the truth. 
and they didn't know which to believe. So I gave them like every spoiler in the show, but they didn't believe me that it was a spoiler. Yeah, so I mean, I thought it was that. a very controversial, you know, shift to actually make the uh, the Christmas special canon and have uh, Chewbacca's son Itchy and uh, or no Lumpy and his grandfather Itchy, you know, return for a special cameo only to kill them off. But you know. Oh my god. That Christmas special, though. I mean, yes, it is evil and sneaky, but at the same time, I didn't ruin loss for them. But, at the same time, you kind of did. But, they still didn't really know what to expect, because they didn't know if I was telling the truth or not. And then, whenever they got to the moment when it was revealed, they were like, oh, Wow! Like, whoa! Like, zoink, scoop! I wish I could do a Shaggy impression, but I'm really terrible at it. See, I wish I could do a Morty impression, but every time I do Morty, it turns into Shaggy. It turns into what? Shaggy. No. Oh, jeez, I don't think we should do that. Scoop! What are we trying to do here? We're trying to place charges at this, uh, thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're supposed to defend Dang the TIE Fighter. Trey. Alright, I can roll with that. Hello, Trey. Hello. Let's go. Um, Is it yeah, Jank you're I'll looking it, for? I'll hopefully see it Wednesday. I might have gone Friday night if it weren't for the fact that I was working Friday, uh, Thursday into Friday. But also... Uh, midnight showings are no longer really my thing, and I just got blasted. I would, uh... I don't know. I went to a lot of midnight showings of things in high school, which was super fun. But I'm just not into midnight showings as much anymore. Like, I, if it's something that I really love... You know, like I went and saw the, the Doctor Who 50th anniversary special at the midnight showing because that was a group of people who were absolutely a blast to watch that with. And it was amazing. Yeah. Well, midnight shows are horrible because I always come out super duper tired. Uh, and also the theater is usually super crowded. But if it's something that you're really into, like that crowd is, I, unless unless it's like, a super duper toxic crowd, which I don't run into that often at midnight showings. But, um, yeah, no, I, I, I absolutely love Because whenever I went to the Doctor Who 50th anniversary, oh my goodness, those people were hype about, were just as hype about the whole thing as me. And it was wonderful. See, it also was... leads into a conversation. What were you going to say? I was going to say, I was trying to be hype at The Last Jedi, but I kept feeling like it was inappropriate, ah. but then other times other people were hype, and then I was like, ah, I can be free to be hype. But what I was saying was that uh, it's a conversation that I had once with Emmy, which was midnight showings are a lot like theater, in that um, the audience is much more into it than normal in movie theater. Yeah. So it... it because it's interesting because we talked a bit about like if you if you look at how audiences were during like say shakespeare's time the audiences were always super into the play and like very vocal about like what was going on and if you have a really good audience at a play they will be vocal the thing is it's just like whenever movies started this weird trend of oh you should be quiet and not react because everyone's just trying to like everyone's just trying to enjoy Right. Um, and that sort of carried over into theater, which is silly because part of what's great about theater is the live reactions of the audience, you know? Yeah. The laughter, the gasps, all that stuff. That helps to play into what you're doing as an actor, which is super cool. Yeah. And Midnight Showings just remind me of that because those are people who are into it, like super into what's going on. And I love it. So yeah, it, it was like the hypest thing ever to go to the Midnight Jump production. But just in general, like, it, they're just late and it's not, I don't know. Yeah, 
it, it's just not really super for me as much as it used to be. But so, are we supposed to shoot the Tie Fighter? I think we're supposed to plant charges on it, but every time I try to get close, I get blasted. I think we're gonna lose. Yeah, I think we're gonna lose too. Yep. We lost. Yeah. Huh. Oh well. Um, also, to answer something that popped up earlier in chat, Ryder, yeah. are you familiar with the Star Wars Christmas special? I'm not sure if you were making a statement or asking a question. If you're asking a question, we can tell you about the Star Wars Christmas special. Oh, okay. You d you're definitely familiar with it, and you know that it's terrible. Okay. Well, to be fair, it it is pretty niche as far as Star Wars stuff goes. But they so. kind of, they actually, like, low-key, not even lying, they kind of did make it canon in a book, uh, which is a collection of stories. It's called A Certain Point of View. And it's like 40 different stories chronicling the lives of 40 different characters from A New Hope as part of the 40th anniversary of Star Wars. So, um... One of the characters is the bartender from the Mos Eisley Cantina, and he talks about Akmina, who is played by B. Arthur in the Christmas special, and um, her partner. Um, That's right, because they got B. Arthur. So, so not only they did they Arthur. make her character canon, they also, you know, confirmed her to be, you know, uh, queer in the story as well, which is cool. Um, but at the same time, did we have to make the uh, Christmas special canon? <laughs> Yeah, we really didn't, though. Oh, Does... I think what I was going to say earlier was how great the advice dispensed by a combination of Maz Kanata and Whoopi Goldberg would be. And then just like throw Akmina in there to flavor. Yeah. Yeah. For flavor. Yeah. It gave us Boba Fett. Did it? Did it? I'm going to really have to watch that. it again. Between Django Fett, Boba Fett, and Captain Phasma, it's just like... Okay, Django Fett was legitimately cool, though. He was, but he still wasn't in those movies for a very long time. He still didn't do much. Yeah. He was like a, a more famous bounty hunter, but you still didn't really see him do anything. But and then you saw him do everything because he was the uh, progenitor of the clones. Right. Son but, of a bitch! Yeah, but the joke, the ongoing joke, <laughs> is how the clones can't aim for crap. Well, technically Star Troopers, but the well, clones no. were the original Star Troopers, so... Clone tr Storm Troopers! You can't even fight me on that one. But anyways... What did I say? Star, st star Troopers. I don't know. You said something, is but it was not Storm Troopers. Is there a situation where someone is called a Star Trooper, though? Because I'm pretty sure that's somewhere. No. It is not. You were wrong. Right. You were absolutely Look, beyond a shadow of a doubt wrong. I'm clearly a terrible Star Wars person. You're just... Yeah. You're getting everything wrong. How do I plant the charges? I don't know. Oh, you have to get up there. Oh. Well, we lost again. Big surprise. Thank you, Ryder. I appreciate the bless. But, um... No, what was I saying? You were saying how Django Fett was legitimately cool. And because oh, he was no, the yeah. progenitor of the clone troopers. But see, here's the thing. The clone troopers were not the stormtroopers. After Order 66... When the Emperor was like, yo, we're going to kill the Jedi and we're going to start the Empire. Slowly, it was a slow process, but by A New Hope, there were no more clones in the Stormtrooper ranks. Because right. he, he knew he that. couldn't trust them. So they, they got, you know, they were removed from position and, you know, just slowly killed off. Um, That's probably what I was thinking. And then it just became like, you know, volunteerism, militia, you know, uh, um... Oh god, what is it? What is it when you're, like, uh, drafted? You know, they were conscripted? drafted. Yeah, conscripted, drafted, and, uh, you know, um, you know, otherwise trained from birth. But the First Order were the, the fucky ones that were like, we're gonna kidnap a bunch of children from everywhere to make them First Order troopers. 
and brainwash them from birth. Uh -huh. So the clones were better shots than the stormtroopers because the stormtroopers never really had to fight in a war, whereas the clone troopers very clearly did. So right, but I, the I think that's the clone troopers were still the the proto stormtroopers. Yeah. But they um, were trained marksmen. Anyway, the the issue is that Boba Fett was not good at his job. Yeah. Like he was, but he wasn't. Like he was a famed uh he was like a famed bounty hunter, but all you really see him do is not really participate in the capture of Han Solo and then die to his hand beast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just that Boba Fett was just like a really popular character after the fact. But like, if you actually go back and watch the original trilogy, you're just like, you really didn't do much, man. Like, you just had a really cool look, but you didn't really do a lot. I think we'll play a couple more rounds and then I'll shut down the stream and then I'm gonna go watch some more Parks and Recreation. Do it! As is my yearly tradition. Because it just makes me feel like, I don't know, Dang that's it. a topic we could talk about. Parks and Rec, which Never inspires watched it. me at the end. Oh my goodness, please watch. If you have Netflix, watch it. I have Netflix. Um, I have no time to watch it. Oh, no, just take no off further. I'm going to call him Bob. I'm sorry, Noah. <laughs> but apparently Mary wants to take you off by calling him Bob Fett. It's, it's, it, you know what? You know what? You know what? It's fine. We'll stop we the rebels you. from escaping with the data on this planet. Actually, I don't know what planet we're on, Ooh, but it doesn't Dana matter. Ah, well, you see, I don't give two shits. I I use and say both frequently. Janky, my friend! What? Hi. Oh. Hi. Oh, that's you. Okay. It is. It is me. It is my friend, hello. It is my friend, hello. Oh, it is my friend, hello. Oh, it is my friend, hello. It is my friend, hello, hello! Wow. Wow. Boom, wow. clap, Enjoy. sound of my heart, the beat goes on and on, on and, and, on, and on, on and on and on and on, yeah. Boom, clap, make me feel good, come home the character with character is data, but the information is data. Interesting. I, I use and say both frequently, so I don't care on that I one. Do. Yeah, I do too. I do too. I mean, here's the thing for me. Right. This is actually a conversation I had with my friend Hannah once, who is, um, she's very into like, well, okay, so here's what the conversation was, because Hannah is my Shakespeare buff friend, yeah. um, a great friend of mine, and we once had a conversation about grammar and how she was an English major. And she said she used to be a really big grammar Nazi, but she actually had a conversation with one of her professors about how the rules of grammar came to be, which is essentially the French implement, implemented, implemented grammar, and everyone just picked up on it. But before that, language was always fluid. So things were changing, and that's why, you know, like, if you read historical texts, there's like a very rich, um, tradition, I guess, of, of having a lot of different spellings and language and like ways to write a sentence and all that. It, it's like the evolution of language and how the evolution of language has kind of been constrained by specific pronunciations and grammar and how like during Shakespeare's time, that was when early modern, that, that was early modern English. So that was when what we consider modern English was first being um, established. And so, um, you had a lot of people spelling and pronouncing things different ways, uh, transitioning from Middle English into Modern English. So, I appreciate that there are specific ways that people should be saying things, but also, I don't really have, like, I don't know, it's really no dust off my shoulder if I mispronounce something, <laughs> or if I don't pronounce it in a way that it should be pronounced, because I'm like, like, Evolution of language. You still knew what I was talking about. But it's wrong. 
Yeah, but who dictates what's wrong? Literally everyone. But who is everyone? The general populace. When everybody is calling it Kashyyyk, you don't go turn around calling it Kashyyyk. Because that's just wrong. That would be like if you said someone's name wrong. Like, if if I said, my name is Noah, but you decided to call me Noah, that would yeah, be inherently a... wrong. Yeah, but, well, and to be fair, what I'm saying doesn't necessarily apply to stuff like Star Wars or, like, of that specific canonicity. Like, Lord of the Rings, right? There's a way to speak Elvish. I don't really remember that much but i remember that there's it's way like how it because J.R.R. tolkien made it in an actual language but here's the but thing it's like how you were on me about learning how to pro properly say the silmarillion that's true but that's also just what it's called yeah well i but i'm talking about i was i was bouncing off of memes like how i say memes even though it's actually memes yeah but I appreciate what you mean with Star Wars. Like, yeah, there is a way to pronounce that. Yeah. Like, But actually, even within uh, the Silmarillion, you see an evolution of language because um, the Elven language is actually based off the language of the, the Valar, who are like the, the angelic beings. Um, and then the other Elven languages branch off of that first Elven language. And you can like actually see that that transition because God, I just got like blindsided because I was on this rant. Um, but you can actually see like the evolution because they actually created a real language in in the series. Janky, we got to bring it back. Start talking about poop. <laughs> ah, shit. Start talking about pop culture and poop. Pop, poop always brings poop people culture. In. Oh my poop. God. You know what that actually reminds me of? We were playing a game at Thanksgiving. Uh, I don't like where this is going, but continue. It was like you had a question, right? And you had to write down an answer on a card, and then everyone had to place bets on what they thought the person who asked the question would pick. Uh, and then you got points based on if your answer got picked and also if your bet was correct. And the answer poop kept coming up frequently because it was almost always hilarious and it almost always worked. For example, what is the worst possible topping for a pizza? Boop. Yep, it works. And it's actually pretty Boop. Fun. Also, <laughs> okay. Hang with me here, but this is good. Um, so one of the questions was, what would I like in my hand right now? And my sister Ashley wrote down a stiff drink. But my grandma, who was sitting at the other side of the table and wasn't wearing her reading glasses, saw something else. <laughs> and, yeah? And we all laughed for 15 minutes straight that my 75-year-old grandmother misread a stiff drink. Yeah. And then my sister changed her answer to what my grandma thought it was and won. <laughs> well... Funny story along those lines. Uh, a few years back, we were driving down to Florida, and my aunt pointed out, because the way we do it is we just all pile in my grandparents' van, and then we all just take turns driving down to Florida. So my mm -hmm. grandparents were in the front, because it was, you know, my grandfather's turn to drive. Um, and my grandmother's the navigator, as always. Um, so my aunt looks out the window and sees a bumper sticker that says, Galactic Republic defeat. Who could have thought? No, the bumper sticker didn't say that. The bumper sticker said, no sex causes bad eyes. And it's like in the weird kind of font that if you can't read it, you know, that makes the joke funny. So my aunt uh -huh. pointed it out. We're all laughing. And my grandmother looks over and she's like, what? What are you laughing at? And then we laugh harder. <laughs> and she's like, no, seriously, what are you guys laughing at? I can't read it. <laughs> and we just kept laughing about it for hours on end good stuff good stuff also you won't be able to see it unless you watch my footage but this last time when we were going down and i grabbed my my heartless sora but um i i was i was ha i was you know sitting next to my aunt and i was having heartless sora just kind of like pester her you know as you do mm -hmm. um 
and for whatever reason, I don't know how it happened, but I just turned them around and I started making them twerk thusly. And it just had my aunt laughing hysterically for the entire trip. So, yeah. So you'll have to watch my footage to see, if you can't see what it twerking is, but... heartless Sora. But, um, yeah. So I, I, I just made the little plushy twerk and it was just the funniest thing for the, re the entire rest of the trip. So... Thank you everyone for watching. If you liked it, let us know. Like and comment down below. Subscribe if you're not already. And while you're at it, subscribe to Janky Shenanigans. For Yo. some Janky Shenanigans. What do you got going on? We got the Pop Culture Podcast every Thursday. Except for when it's not. Most of the time it is. Most of the time it is. Effort. Yes. Um, and also hanging with Janky, which I do every Sunday. Yeah. Uh, just wrap up of a whole bunch of gaming news. So a lot of quirky stories that we don't get around to on the Pop Culture Podcast, I do there. Yeah. Uh, any other big projects in the works? Uh, no, mostly just Twitch streams. Working on some New Year's resolutions for a new Twitter video for January. All that good stuff. Yeah. So be sure to check him out. And uh, yeah. So thank you all for watching. And I will see you all next time. May the force be with you, everyone. Uh -huh.